I'd like to ask a question about the epistemic status of parts of mathematics. Let's um, think first of all about the parts of mathematics which seem not to have any great role to play in science. So you often speak of these clumps of sentences which achieve a certain critical mass by having um, observational consequences, and you uh, spoke of the cases in which uh, mathematical sentences would find their place in those clumps, but it seems uh, also you said that there would be some parts of mathematics which would very, which would, uh, very rarely or never have a role to play there. How would we uh, assess uh, whether we should accept certain parts of uh, certain proposals for mathematical uh, sentences or other proposals for mathematical sentences where they're not going to play a role in science. Yes, good. Uh, that's, a, that's a question that has worried me. Uh, the, the position I've uh, come to is this. Uh, the reason those sentences seem intelligible to us and uh, uh, seem to want uh, uh, investigation is that they are built up from the same vocabulary, mathematical vocabulary, by the same uh, uh, grammatical uh, uh, constructions uh, as uh, the part of mathematics uh, that is needed in uh, application to, to science. Uh, and, uh, uh, we, uh, if, uh, and we we might uh, uh, like to uh, cut down on all our uh, commitments there and uh, 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 narrow our field of uh, investigation explicitly by rendering all the rest of these matters uh, inexpressible. Uh, but to do that would entail a, a uh, forbidding, uh, complex uh, uh, mutilation uh, and uh, uh, gerrymandering, a cutting away of, uh, of uh, uh, sentences as meaningless uh, uh, without our being able to give a straightforward, uh, relatively a simple uh, 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 grammatical definition of of, of well-formed well-formed sentence. Um, so uh, we find it uh, uh, more practical to let all these things in. Uh, uh, and uh, then, that being the case, two questions arise: one, how far to let that go? How far uh, how how far must it ex extend? Well, uh, of course, no. no no farther than uh, the, 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 the requisite, what seems to be the requisite grammar uh, uh, entails. But there's the further question, what, since we are admitting these sentences, inapplicable though they are, uh, what's going to count, uh, how are they, what's going to count them as true or false? Mm -hmm. uh, well, of course, uh, we would say uh, demonstrability. And uh, the, the, demonstra the demonstrability uh, would be the basis for the truth. And demonstrability, that would be by the very rules that are also needed in carrying out uh, the practical, uh, applicable mathematics. However, that uh, doesn't uh, quite do the trick because uh, Gödel has shown that you can't have a complete uh, proof procedure for even for the applicable part of mathematics, uh, the very applicable, namely number theory. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, how do we decide? Uh, and uh, uh, there are uh, uh, a few... Uh, famous uh, uh, mathematical uh, uh, formulations up in set theory, up uh, higher set theory, where there's no thought of application, uh, axiom of choice and c the continuum hypothesis, uh, uh, where uh, you, can't e you, can't, uh, you can't prove these from familiar uh, 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 accepted uh, uh, bases of set theory, even the, the ones that are, the, basis, the bases that are formulated. How to decide? They must be true or false. I mean, by our, the, our, our, the, the, the uh, commitments or fictions that govern our whole uh, ap logical apparatus that we're accepting. Uh, my uh, preference there, my line, is to say that uh, those uh, 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 c cases can be uh, settled more or less satisfactorily, one after another, uh, some of them anyway by the same sorts of considerations by which we uh, make decisions uh, out in uh, natural science uh, in the very theoretical reaches where uh, uh, you, you can't get uh, anything in the way of an of a, uh, uh, empirical test, uh, yeah, even indirectly, but uh, uh, you still have to, uh, have to settle one way or another what, what, how, how to count it in order to round out the theory. Uh, and uh, namely, considerations of simplicity uh, uh, are, are the characteristic thing. Uh, and uh, so the, the maximum economy uh, of, of 
ontology uh, compatible with the maximum economy of, uh, of uh, theory, uh, structure. Uh, and uh, there are various places that we could draw the uh, line with that, that in mind. And there's uh, something uh, in particular uh, in 1940, some theory that uh, Gödel uh, developed, uh, which uh, does, does give us uh, a uh, very inviting uh, cutoff point, uh, something that he called uh, uh, a constructability, a trait of uh, certain certain uh, uh, sets. Uh, the, the, uh, that familiar uh, intelligible enough name doesn't really make this uh, intelligible because it's a very special application of the word. But uh, anyway, uh, this is something that uh, a standard that gives us uh, uh, everything we could conceivably want to apply and a bit more. But it has the advantage of being a neat cutoff, and below that uh, we don't see any. Uh, uh, namely, to adopt an axiom, there's an even uh, a, 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 a quite a laconic uh, uh, a formulation of the axiom, three characters, namely V equals L, uh, which uh, does this. Uh, and uh, so Gödel's axiom, it isn't an axiom that Gödel accepts, it's an axiom that, or rejects, it's an axiom that he, uh, it's a, a, print, a, a proposition, uh, it's, a, it's a formula uh, that he uh, gives and explores, uh, but uh, I would uh, adopt it uh, as a postulate. Can I just ask? And it should be added here, I think, that you're, you are, in, in this regard, very, very much in the minority, almost Good. no yeah. set theorist. Uh, it, uh, um, favors adoption of V equals L as an axiom. One notable exception may be Ronald Jensen of Oxford University, but uh, apart oh. from that, I don't know of anyone. Uh, there may be some, no, of course, but, but it, by and large, set no, theorists yeah. reject L, and they regard it now as almost obviously false. Yeah. That's it, spoils it, it spoils their fun. It spoils their fun, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's just verifies Van's point. Um, I wanted to ask whether in the outer reaches of set theory where you um, said along the way in your answer that you would uh, advert to considerations of simplicity, for example, whether it's best to think of simplicity as a guide to the truth or as constituting the truth in those cases? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, I don't think I can distinguish that once we, get, once we get that far out. Just as when we're way in at the other extreme, at the most obvious, uh, the truth functions and the like, I can't distinguish between <coughs> what's a change of logical theory and what's a change of, uh, mm -hmm. of uh, terminology and uh, determin uh, semantics interpretation. <coughs> um, I also wanted to ask a question about um, the epistemic status of the more workaday parts of uh, mathematics. Just take the, any very, very simple statement like 2 plus 2 equals 4. There are uh, philosophers, philosophers concerned about epistemology, who worry about uh, the following. In epistemology, um, even in uh, naturalized epistemology, the notion that is appealed to a very great deal is causation. Some kind of causal transaction seems to be involved in our arriving at knowledge. But uh, mathematical objects being abstract objects plausibly don't participate in causal transactions. So how can we know even such simple truths as the 2 plus 2 equals 4. What would you say to these philosophers? Well, of, of course, a first thought is to uh, 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 board uh, John Stuart Mill's boat, at least for the duration of this bit, uh, empirically by uh, Put a group of putting apples in uh, separate piles, experimenting uh, that particular that particular example.